Hello everyone, myself Dr. Sailas Agrawal. I am working as a scientist in the Birbal Sahani Institute of Paleo Sciences, Lucknow. Now today basically I will discuss about the fundamentals of isotope ratio mass spectrometer. Before giving fundamental details of isotope ratio mass spectrometer, I would like to discuss about the applications of isotope ratio mass spectrometer in the field of earth science. Now it is well known that the earth climate has been changing from billions of years and it is continuously fluctuating between warmer and cooler periods. But there were not any human on the earth in billions or million years time scale to document all these events. In such conditions basically we use uh, different archives like marine and uh, terrestrial where this all these climatic signals are preserved. These proxies are basically ocean sediments, tree ring, paleosol, ice core, soil carbonate nodules, speleothene and lake sediments. Mud and sand are deposited at the bottom of the lake. So it provides annual information regarding the lake level fluctuation. On the other hand, if you will see towards the tree ring, so each and every tree ring provides information regarding the paleoclimatic condition annual paleoclimatic condition of the tree in which tree was grow. Interestingly, soil carbonate nodules form in the soil zone. Now these nodules, nodules provide useful information regarding the paleomonsoonal rainfall and paleovegetation history. And all this information basically with the help of isotope ratio mass spectrometer, we take all those information from all these proxies. In this series, Basically on the basis of soil carbonate nodule, uh, various workers have shown expansion of C4 plant during the late Miocene time. So now like that we can use isotope ratio mass spectrometer to solve various geological problems. Each and every biological material or abiological material have a contrast isotopic signals. Here I am giving you example of delta 13C values. Now in this diagram you can see this red, red bars are basically uh, inorganic material like freshwater carbonate, groundwater carbonate, marine limestone. So all this uh, inorganic material are characterized by very high delta 13C values. On the other hand if you will see towards the left corner of this uh, diagram you can identify more negative values in the biological material. So such contrasting features are enable us to infer paleoclimatic condition with the help of this marine and continental archives. In this series basically we use isotope ratio mass spectrometer. Here I am showing you uh, isotope ratio mass spectrometer which is at the center of the uh, center of the photograph. Now with the help of this mass spectrometer we can measure isotopes of hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen and sulfur in various kind of natural, uh, natural materials. Now first of all I would like to give you brief information regarding the principle. Now actually through example I would like to explain the principle of IRMS. Now suppose if we throw a lighter and heavier ball in a linear direction then in normal condition those balls will go in a linear pattern but if we will apply side force then this ball will deflect and that deflection will depends on the masses of the ball like lighter ball will deflect more than the heavier ball. So IRMS also works in the same principle. Like here I am showing you uh, three parts of the IRMS. First is ion source, electromagnetic field and then the detector. So when ion enters into the magnetic field so due to the magnetic field, uh, ions are deflected according to their mass by charge ratio and lighter ions deflected more than the heavier ions and those ions are collected into the different cups. So now in this principle IRMS works. In our institute we have continuous flow isotope ratio mass spectrometer. This mass spectrometer is a gas source mass spectrometer means for this mass spectrometer we required gaseous samples but in field we collect either solid samples or liquid samples like water. 
So it is not possible for us to put the samples into the IRMS. To produce gas, we use peripheral parts like elemental analyzer, GC combustion or GC isolink and gas bench. Through this peripheral part, we produce different gases like CO2, nitrogen, hydrogen, carbon monoxide, SO2. And we measure the uh, isotopic value of that gas. Like for CO2 gas, we can measure the delta 13C value and delta 18 value. With the help of nitrogen gas, we can measure delta 15N. So like that. So uh, before analytical part, I would like to give brief information regarding the sample processing technique. So for each, uh, for each peripheral parts, the sample preparation technique is different. So first of all, I would like to explain the sample preparation technique of elemental analyzer. For elemental analyzer, we can analyze uh, either hard rock samples or soft sediment samples. Even we can measure uh, leaf of plant or other substance. So for rock samples or sediment samples, first we take, uh, we homogenize the samples and we take uh, one or two gram raw samples and powdered it. After powdering, we treat those samples with 5% SCN three or four times depending on carbonate content. After removal of carbonate, we rinse those samples with milky water at least five times to remove acid and soluble salt. After that, we dry those samples and again to uh, reduce or to remove lumps, we again powdered it. Finally, we packed those powdered samples, known amount of powdered samples into the tin capsules and introduced those samples into the anal elemental analyzer through the auto sampler. So now this samples combust in a, uh, in a oxidation reaction tube and CO2, NOx and other gases are produced. Those gases passes through the oxidation reactor. So any carbon monoxide which present in the samples is converted into CO2 gas. And then finally all these gases come out from the oxidation combustion tube. Then it entered into the reduction tube where the excess of oxygen removed. Finally all these gases entered into the water trap where we removed moisture content. And finally these gases entered into GC column. In GC column, elute lighter gases first and heavier gases at last. So through this basically GC column separation, we separate nitrogen and CO2 gas. And then finally, we introduce all these gases into the mass spectrometer through the Conflow 4 interface. In the gas bench, we can measure oxygen and carbon isotopic composition of carbonate and oxygen and hydrogen isotopic composition of water samples. So here I am showing you sample preparation procedure for carbonate samples. So initially whatever carbonate samples like soil carbonate or any gastropod samples we take from the field and first of all we, rem uh, we clean it with uh, distilled water to remove surface contamination. Then after that we classify the soil carbonate samples and we usually do the photography. Following this, we also do the XRD to understand the exact mineralogy of the samples. Finally, for carbonate nodule, limestone and spilothene samples, we divide samples into two parts. One part mainly we use to make a polished section and second part is mainly used to make a thin section. After studying this thin section, we take powder from the polish section through the dental drill or through the micro mill for isotopic analysis. In case of gastropod, we do sampling along the growth ring of the sample. And finally, for forum or ostracod, basically we separate single species samples. So after preparation of these samples, we keep all these samples in separate vials one by one. And then we kept all these vials in gas bench in a systematic manner. With the help of needle, we flush out all the atmospheric gases from these vials and then add, we add acid. We usually give two hours reaction time and then we 
uh, we measure the isotopic composition of CO2 gas. Now, in the bottom part of the diagram, you can see the through needle basically we are uh, removing the CO2 gas produced within the vials. That CO2 gas is passing through the water trap, which is basically an effion tube. So initially we removed some water, then it goes to Volco. From Volco, again CO2 gas entered into the GC column where the lighter, ga lighter gases uh, elute faster than the heavier. So through this GC column separation, we separate nitrogen, CO2 and other gases. Again all these gases pass through the water removal and it went to the open split and entered into the isotope ratio mass spectrometer. So now, this is the isotope ratio mass spectrometer. Here you can see the gas which we have separated. Now gas is entering, entering into the ion source. Now ions are formed. We use acceleration voltage to push all these ions into the magnetic field. At the magnetic field, ions are separated by their mass by charge ratio and collected in different collectors. So in case of CO2 gas, basically we measured mass 44, 45, 46 in three different curves. In more detail, I would like to show you one more diagram. Here at the left hand side corner, you can see the ionization chamber. And in ionization chamber, it contains a tungsten filament which emits the electron. So electron beams are there. Now sample gas entered into the ionization chamber due to electron bombardment, all the gas convert into the ion and finally those ions entered into the magnetic field in form of beam. Now finally as per the mass by charge ratios these ions separates and finally those ions hits to the detector. A detector is connected with amplifier which amplifies the signals and all the signals transfer into the computer. And now finally we get such kind of a spectra. In this spectra, at the middle part of the spectra you can see in y axis intensity in millivolt has been plotted and in the x axis time is given. So initially we put the three pulses of reference CO2 gas where uh, followed by a one pulse of sample gas. And on the basis of international standard we calibrate our reference gas cylinder and measure the delta 13C value of CO2 gas. In case of gas bench, we usually take six sample gas peak and then we take the average value of this sample peak for the reporting purpose. So similar to the previous spectra, here we are also putting three pulses of reference gas, six pulses of sample gas. So like that, we measure the isotopic values. So after measurement, we usually see towards the data and we interpret this data in form of paleoclimatic condition to show the paleomonsoonal rainfall, to understand the paleovegetational history and the, to solve the geological boundary problem. So uh, we use this IRMS instrument as a tool to measure isotopic ratios and finally that isotopic ratios has been interpreted in, to solve various kind of geological problem. Here I would like to say thank you to listening me and in next talk we will discuss more about the fundamentals of isotopes and IRMS. Thank you. Hello everyone. Last time I gave brief information regarding isotope ratio mass spectrometer. Now here I would like to show you the main instrument and uh, I will provide information regarding the fundamentals of uh, isotope ratio mass spectrometer. So now this machine is a isotope ratio mass spectrometer and this is a model MAT-253. Now this model has a three part, one is source, second one is magnetic field and third one is collector. Okay, so this mass spectrometer is a gas source mass spectrometer. But from field we collect solid rock samples or sediment samples or water samples. So those samples we cannot put directly into this instrument. 
so for this purpose basically we have a three peripheral part one is gas bench second one is gc isoling and third one is elemental analyzer so now with the help of this three periphery we produce the gases and then those gases we send from that part to this irms and this irms measure the isotopic ratios of desirable gases now basically the samples which we collect from the field like if suppose we have collected pellucid samples so first we dry all those samples and we take homogenized 1 or 2 mg uh, 1 or 2 gram samples representative samples now for organic carbon isotopic analysis or nitrogen isotopic analysis we crush the samples and we make a fine powder and for carbon isotopic analysis we treat those samples with a 5% uh, hcl and then after 3 4 times acid treatment we again uh, wash those samples with the help of milky water and after that we dry those samples and then again we crush those samples to make a fine powder after making a fine powder we first of all we packed packed those samples into the tin capsules why we are weighing because along with carbon isotopic values we want to measure total organic carbon content so for this purpose we have to weigh our samples so now the samples we have packed in tin capsules and then this tin capsules are introduced in the elemental analyzer through the flux combustion all the organic content converted into co2 gas those co2 gas passes through the reactor water removal trap and column and finally that gas reach to the conflow force and from conflow force that gas entered into the mass spectrometer where this gas ionized in entered into the magnetic field and then gas, uh, ions particles are collected in different curves